Happy Friday! Welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. My name is Emma and today I need you guys to trash my TV out. So this is a follow-up to about three years ago, I made a video called Hey You, Trash My TBR, where I went through my Goodreads TBR, the books that I hadn't bought yet, and asked you guys to trash them so I could get that list down to something way more manageable. You did a great job. Then fast forward two years, I decided to make this a proper series with like a game where every month or every round, I would pick like 10 or 20 books from the TBR and get you guys to trash those ones and then read the ones that you didn't trash and see how you did and it was a whole idea and I did round one and that was checks notes a full year ago. I went through all of that and I even bought the books straight away that you guys didn't trash and I just did not read them for a full year. So we're trying again this is technically the third iteration of this but round two of my proper like trash my TBR game and this time I am really going to try to make this more regular. I'm not going to do it every month because then I'll dictate everything I get to read all the time but you know I'm going to try and do it every few months and read the books pretty quickly. So to make that possible I need you guys to be way more brutal because I don't want to end up with like a massive ton of books I have to read. I need you guys to trash as many as you can. Be as harsh as you want. Because I have to say, I'm going to go to the results of last round's Trash My TBR. You didn't smash it. <laughs> Let's have a look. After the last video, you guys trashed Blackberry Winter, The Sudden Appearance of Hope, Every Heart a Doorway, Not Forgetting the Whale, The Martian, The Pumpkin Eater, and The Book. But you let me keep The Comet Seekers, which I've just DNF'd because couldn't get into that one. You let me keep The Girl in 6E, which I DNF'd and have already given away because I hated that book. I will say, Jessica Penhallow, you told me in the comments to trash it, but too late because I'd already bought it. So where were you when I needed you? You were the only sensible one. You also, I had decided personally to trash Nina Is Not Okay, but then from all the comments, I decided to add it back in and I bought it. And it turns out I was right the first time because I DNF'd it. I'm sure it's a great book, but it's just, that is not the t kind of book that I want to be reading. It's basically just about a teenage girl like going off the rails and she has these really shit things happen to her and she has a drinking problem and I'm sure this is a really good book, like I'm not insulting the existence of that book. I think as a teenager I loved reading stuff like that and I think it's really important to expose people to those kinds of issues but at this stage in my life I do not want to be reading that, especially I am a very strong emetophobe. I do not like hearing about people being sick. And there were just, oh, I'm not even gonna describe it for other people who are emetophobes, but there were so many descriptions, even in the short bit that I read of, ugh, oh, I cannot handle it. So no, trash books like that for me, please. I'm being very aggressive. <laughs> you guys are great. Because you also told me to keep these two, White is for Witching by Helen Ayemi and Shelter by Jung Yen. And I loved both of these. These were both four star reads, absolutely adored them. So thank you so much for making sure I kept these books in my life. So basically that was five books that I ended up keeping and three of them I DNF'd. So I do want to be way more brutal. I want you guys to let out your most aggressive feisty sides and just trash these books in the comments to make sure that I only buy the books that are really, really up my alley. So I'm going to do the same format as last time round. I've picked the next 10 books on my Goodreads TBR and this is in order that I added them. So these are the ones I've been sitting on my TBR for the longest. So first I'm going to go through them myself, maybe try the first chapter of each one, see if there are any that I already think I can trash. And then everything that's left I'm going to put to you guys and that's where I need you to just go nuts. If I end up buying none of the list, even better because then I can do the next round even quicker. Okay, so the first book that is up for potential trashing is Dear Mr. M by Herman Koch. So I read The Dinner a few years ago by him and absolutely loved it. Since then I haven't been able to get into anything else by him, so I'm unclear. So I was going to try and summarise it for you, but just like reading the Goodreads summary, it seems so confusing, which I kind of love. It seems like it's loads of different interlocking stories, including like a work of fiction that also is linked to the truth. So that sounds really, really interesting. It only has a 3.29 average rating. I'm gonna read the first chapter and see what it does for me. 
Oh, interesting first chapter. This could really go either way for me. It's one of those books that's like not a fast paced thing. And this is what I remember from his writing. A lot of it is like observing human characteristics, which is something that I can absolutely love in a book as long I it goes either way. Like either a book has that and completely draws me and I love it, especially like when it gets really dark or if it goes too far in that way to just like literally nothing happening and we're just observing too much, I just like pull away. So yeah, I need your guys' thoughts on this one. Has anyone read Dear Mr. M? Should I trash it? Should I stash it? What could be the opposite of trash it? Meaning that I get it. Trash it or smash it? <laughs> That's what we're going with. Should I trash it or smash it? Let me know in the comments. Okay, moving on to the next book. Oh, okay, so the next one is The Magicians by Lev Grossman. And I've heard such mixed things about this book already. And I have to say, I don't like fantasy, like, really at all. I can't really remember any book recently that I've enjoyed that's fantasy. People always then say, Emma, you like Harry Potter. Yes, I do like Harry Potter. I really enjoy Harry Potter. But I don't love it to the, with the same intensity that a lot of people do. And also, I think that one is kind of a special case because... And it like has the nostalgia but also it's about like someone who thought they were a normal muggle person and then is like brought into this magical world so you go with them so it's kind of like baby steps i really don't enjoy books where right from the beginning it's just set in an alternate world that's just not my thing so is that what this is because if so i probably won't like it i'm gonna read the first chapter just because i've heard so much about this book that i'm just intrigued at this point either way <laughs> Okay, I think I've made this decision for me. I think I'm gonna trash this book. So it's not like in that first chapter there was even much of the fantasy thing, but I hadn't registered that the main characters are teenagers. Maybe that changes, but in that first chapter they're teenagers. And generally, I don't relate as much when I'm reading books about teenagers. Having said that, I'm now at the moment like currently completely addicted to the To All The Boys I've Loved Before trilogy. But that being an exception, usually I don't love reading books where the main characters are teenagers. Um, it's definitely got that kind of, that, that trope that's really, really popular and some people absolutely love. Like, this is all about teenagers, like, at a boarding school or, or rather they're about to go to university. Um, and that kind of, like, magical society and that, it ju it's just not my thing. I was interested by this one at all because people said it was, like, a darker version and I love any I love anything that's like a darker subversion of something but it's probably just not for me so I think I've made that decision myself trash it okay next on my TBR is called The Mother and I can't quite remember what this book is okay The Mother by Yvette Edwards I recognize this front cover this is about an emotionally devastated mother's struggle to understand her teenage son's death wow that seems deep she must go to court for the trial of the killer another teenage boy this might be my kind of thing it sounds like just from skin reading that synopsis it sounds a little bit um everything i never told you esque about like her discovering the secrets that she didn't know about her son let's read that sample this might be a book that makes me deeply upset well the uk cover is very different the cover that i recognize is the american one and the uk cover makes it seem like a totally different type of book it makes it look much more like the kind of book you might buy in a supermarket whereas the US cover made it look like this like really intense literary novel so anyway let's just read this chapter shall we I can't concentrate on the chapter because I need to sneeze okay I think this one looks really good um it's got a lot about race in it as well yeah I think that's gonna be really powerful so I am definitely putting that on the list trash it if you guys know better if, if you don't think i'll enjoy this book let me know otherwise that's going on the list oh the next one i remember this the next one is allegedly by what's she called tiffany d jackson yeah this one i've wanted to read for ages i can't believe i still haven't got around to it so i feel like i'm definitely gonna smash this one unless you guys again know better so this is about a woman called mary a black woman who is looking after a white baby and the white baby dies she is convicted of being responsible for the death of this baby but six years on she is now pregnant um and it becomes really important to her to set the record straight before the state threatens to take her baby and the only person that might be able to help her is her mother but her mother is also the person she distrusts the most so this sounds like really really layered it's got a 4.07 average rating i'm really really interested in this one 
um so let's just have a look at that first chapter even though i'm already like pretty decided i want to read this i really love this i think the writing is brilliant i'm sold i'm sold please do trash it if you think i won't like it okay next is the price of salt by patricia highsmith so this i think is the book that carol is based on the movie carol but i haven't seen the movie carol got a 3.96 average rating on goodreads and yeah it's about a woman called therese who falls in love with a housewife named Carol. And I know I really like Patricia Highsmith's writing because I've read The Talented Mr. Ripley and really enjoyed that. That's the only one of hers I've read. Um, so yeah, I'm really interested in this one. Has anyone seen the movie Carol, by the way? Should I watch that? Looking at some of the reviews on Goodreads, some people have said that the narrative voice was quite distant, so it was hard for you to feel connected to the protagonist. And that is something that is often a problem for me. Um, I need to feel like really connected to the characters, but I'm gonna have a see for myself reading that first chapter So far this narrative voice doesn't seem distant at all to me. I feel like I'm right in her head I'm interested in that main character so far. I like the way that's written. So yeah, that's going on the list trash it or smash it for me I feel like trash it or smash it on second thoughts is not as good as I thought it was Okay, the next book on this list is so you've been publicly shamed by John Ronson Another one I've wanted to read for ages. So this is non-fiction and it's about people who've been publicly shamed on the internet basically and the kind of mob mentality and the dangers of that. And I think this is going to be really interesting because you know, this is like such an ongoing debate all the time about call out culture and cancel culture and whether it's dangerous or whether it's a good thing. And I think people get really, really heated on each side. And whereas I'm like somewhere in the middle, you know, I think that the fact that we live in an age where people can be called out like anyone can have a voice to call out something that they see as offensive or problematic or dangerous or um, damaging is wonderful but at the same time it is this dangerous tool and we do end up you can end up ruining people's lives unfairly and I'm not talking about calling out celebrities who say like their careers have been ruined from allegations because actually those celebrities seem to be completely bulletproof, you know, all those celebrities who complain about having been cancelled and ruining their careers still have careers. So I'm not talking about those people, I'm talking more about everyday people. So the story that is most famous from this book is of that woman who, it's a regular woman who was going on a plane and she tweeted a, a joke. I think what she says is that she was making fun of racism in her joke, or she was like satirising racism in her in her tweet. Um, but it didn't come across very well. And anyway, she tweeted this out, got on the plane, and by the time she landed, the tweet had gone completely viral. And this was a woman who did not have a big Twitter following. So, like, she was not prepared or expecting that to happen. By the time she landed, she had been fired from her job. She was absolutely everywhere. People were gathered at the airport to meet her there. And that story just was absolutely terrifying to me. Maybe she shouldn't have made that joke. I can't remember exactly what the joke was. Maybe someone did need to call her out and say, actually what you've said there is offensive for x y and z but to take this woman who does not have a following and does not she didn't have like her tweet did not have this big dangerous power because she didn't have a following of people seeing it and then to amplify it so much that is the dark side of internet call out culture so i'm really interested in reading this book and seeing stories about people that this has happened to and i don't know where john ronson falls like what his conclusion is about what we should do so i'm interested to see that i've already actually over the past read quite a lot of extracts from it so i'm not going to read a try chapter there i'm just going to say yeah i'm really interested in this one um so anyone who has like strong opinions about this debate what do you think about John Ronson's argument? Do you think that's something that I'd enjoy reading? Okay, the next one here is The Conjoined, which consistently comes at the bottom whenever I sort my Goodreads TBR by lowest rating. It's always there. This is a really low rated book. I mean, not really low, because I actually get rid of most things that are like under three, but it's a 3.31 rating. Harriet Rosie gave it two stars, but Joss gave it four stars. So, you know, I'm torn. And it's set like, from the premise, it sounds amazing. So this is about a guy, or no, a woman, sorry. This is about a woman who, after her mother dies, she's sorting through her things, ready for the funeral, and she discovers, in her basement, a freezer with two dead girls in it. And she remembers when her mother adopted these foster children who then went missing. And so, like, this is absolutely terrifying. <sighs> Let's have a look at that first chapter. Ooh, I definitely want to read that book. That was such a strong opening. And also just like sounds like it's been really interesting. So up until that, that point, it had been this 
this main character talking about her mother's social work and her own attempts at working in the foster system um, and how hard she found it and a partner who works in um, finding homes for homeless people so it's like a lot of this interesting social conversation going on and then suddenly it's like boom dead children in a freezer i have to read that book i have to read that book trash it for me tell me why people don't like this book so that i don't waste my time but otherwise that sounds incredible okay three more the next one has also been a very polarizing book and that is why we broke up by daniel handler so daniel handler is lemony snicket a woman writes a letter to a man that she's just broken up with and gives him a box filled with items that explain why they broke up the items are stuff like two bottle caps a movie ticket a folded note a box of matches a protractor so on, so on, so on. and then the items is an illustrated book so each item is illustrated and explained why it fits into the story of why they broke up which i think sounds fascinating but people either love this book or hate this book and i can't remember why they hate it so lala gave it five stars that's a good sign but cc from problems of a book nerd only gave it two she said it was because the relationship felt ridiculous and nonsensical which for some reason that doesn't bother me <laughs> i think i really want to read this one I'm not going to try a chapter because I want to actually get the physical books so that I can look at the illustrations properly. Um, but I'm definitely putting that one forward. So far, I'm doing a really bad job of trashing these for myself. I was really hoping that more of these wouldn't appeal to me. Um, I'm definitely interested in reading this one. But I am interested in why some people say it really didn't work for them. So go hard on this one. Trash it. Tell me why some people find it to be like too over the top ridiculous. The next one is called Orbiting Jupiter. And I don't remember what this book is or why it's on my list. So this is about a boy called Jack who meets his new foster brother um, and what he knows about his foster brother Joseph is that one, he almost killed a teacher, two, he has a daughter and three, he is desperate to find that daughter. The daughter is called Jupiter and it's about both of these brothers going on this search to find the daughter. So that sounds really moving. It's got four stars from a lot of people that I'm friends with on Goodreads. Interesting. My first reaction and this like it's gonna sound really bad but i generally prefer reading books about women um i like to kind of see myself reflected in books and i like to to learn different people's experiences read about women in, in different parts of the world in different situations um in different like family setups all of that but i just tend to prefer reading about women i don't tend to like reading about men i find it harder to relate maybe that's a really bad thing to say um, but that one has like such good ratings from everyone that maybe I just need to like get past that. I used to read a lot of books by men, so I know that I can do it. Come on Emma, don't be so reverse sexist. So yeah, I'm putting this one open to you guys. Oh, I should read the first chapter, that would help. Let's see if I can get inside this guy's head. Okay, that was a really short sample and yeah, wow, <laughs> I really want to read that book. Um, so this, this kid, Joseph, the one who comes into their family, is really traumatized by something so it seems like it's gonna be really really sad and so on goodreads people say it's quite short so yeah i really want to read that this list is getting long i'm almost gonna have to buy all of these books guys help me trash these books but how because they all sound so good i'm making this job so hard for you final one on this list is i found you by lisa jewel i've never read any lisa jewel but people love her i think i have the family upstairs on my physical tbr here which i'm planning to read during Thrillerathon. What is I Found You About? So this is about two women. In one of them, a woman has been married only for about three weeks and then her husband disappears. But when she reports this, the police look into it and say the husband never existed. And then we have another storyline of a woman who finds this man outside her house. He has no name, no jacket, no idea what he's doing there. So I guess, is that the missing husband? Probably. So that sounds interesting. I've got to the point with thrillers where I absolutely love thrillers, they're like my favourite things to read but I've read so many now that I actually find it really hard to get ones that I love and because I've read so many I no longer like the ones that are all about building up to a reveal where you know that you're waiting to find out the mystery, what's the answer and it all builds up to that and you just wait and wait and wait and eventually you find out the mystery of what happened because however exciting and interesting and bizarre and original that answer is you've just spent the book waiting for the reveal and i no longer like those they're not interesting enough for me i like it where a twist comes at you that you weren't expecting and where as you're reading the book there has to be enough you have to be given enough that even if you guess the answer it doesn't matter because the experience of reading it is enjoyable enough i don't like it where it's just all based on bet you can't guess this answer and then they finally give it to you because even if i 
didn't guess it, it's usually disappointing. And then if I did guess it, I feel like I wasted my time. So I'm unconvinced if this one is going to do it for me. I'm not going to read the first chapter of that because I don't think that will help me. I think the first chapter probably will just set up the mystery. And what I want to know is what happens to the bulk of the book. Because a lot of those mystery thrillers have like brilliant openings. So that probably has a brilliant opening. They have either fantastic or disappointing endings. What I want to know is the middle. I'm putting that one to you guys to trash it if you think it won't rise above and beyond all of those things that I've just said. Otherwise, I'm not going to bother. What I want from you here is not for you to try and encourage me to read these books. I don't want you to tell me the ones that you think I'll love. I'm already interested in this list, so what I want you guys to do is trash them. <laughs> tell me everything that you hate about these books, if you hate them, because often, that doesn't necessarily turn me off. Like, if somebody writes a long comment about everything they hate about that book, I might read that comment and be like, actually none of those things bother me, or I quite like those tropes, so I'll still buy it. I just need help, like, not spending all of my money on books. So trash them, trash them, trash them, tell me everything you hate. Let's just like run through the books that I'm putting up to you guys. The only one I've managed to trash for myself is The Magicians. So I want you guys to trash Dear Mr. M, The Mother, Allegedly, The Price of Salt, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, The Conjoined, Why We Broke Up, Orbiting Jupiter, and I Found You. Go, 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 and then I will buy everything that you guys don't trash. So in the next round of this video, which hopefully will not be another full year, I promise, I'm gonna really try, I'll update you on what I ended up getting, which ones you guys didn't trash, which ones you guys maybe should have trashed if I didn't like them, and then we can do it all over again. See you next time.